Of course, the easiest way to save money is to waste less energy. So here's a proposal. Help manufacturers eliminate energy waste in their factories and give businesses incentives to upgrade their buildings. Their energy bills will be $100 billion lower over the next decade. And America will have less pollution, more manufacturing, more jobs for construction workers who need it. We have over 520 different manufacturing uh, uh, companies that are located in the county, and that's the largest number in the entire state, uh, employing over 19,000 people with a payroll of uh, over $320 million. So it's very clear that if we can go back to increasing the jobs in manufacturing, we can help broaden or, or make greater the number of people who are enjoying middle class living. Well, RMI is interested in helping companies be more competitive and more productive so that they can uh, be successful in this global uh, marketplace we have today. Manufacturers are very, very interested in sustainability in general. Energy conservation is the quickest route to reducing cost. I think because of the fact that we could prove to them that this would be an investment that would have a payback to the company, it would improve their productivity, it would save on cost, and make them more globally competitive, it became a no-brainer. I mean, fundamentally, our job was to try to motivate and encourage manufacturers to participate in an agenda that meant that they had to make some changes at the workplace. Our approach was that we worked with six companies in a collaborative fashion, along with an expert team of consultants that we hired to work with them on a monthly basis. green team opportunity came up uh, and Mike Galeazzo described what was going to happen with the green team, there's yeah, no way I could say no to it. To make it a Long Beach brand free. and I think that's 35 years of money. It helps again, I'm very much into the Chamber of Commerce. So mind. the different approach involved meeting with company leadership on a regular basis visits the company on a weekly basis. It also meant that we were able to work with them in a way that they were beginning to feel comfortable with us. Uh, the idea behind the green team was to look at ways that we could save money and make things more efficient. The key to the initiative with RMI being successful has really been not a focus on the abstract. It's been a real focus on results that work on the floor. So we've got a common group of folks. We don't all produce the same stuff, but we all produce. Uh, we all have waste streams. We all have uh, cost targets that we're trying to meet. So we understand the situation each other's in. And what RMI's been able to do is actually bring some real solutions to it. They listen to us. They understand what it is that's important to focus on. They don't come with a preconceived notion of, here's the stone tablets, go do this. They listen to our needs and figure out how we tailor solutions around that. So to see a group of companies come together to share some great ideas, get the support of RMI, get the support of the state, was just wonderful. So we've been looking for a way to do this, yeah, and this just fit the bill. The fact that we get a lot of credits for the, for the polyvinyl uh, roof on it's white. Typically people have resources or they have information or they have projects that can be helpful to manufacturing, but all too often, quite bluntly, they fail. They don't really get implemented for a wide variety of reasons. Our approach was different in that we organized a group of six companies working with their leadership and with their workers. It was a chance to get together with people who were pretty much in exactly the same boat and say, what's worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? Who do you trust out there? Who can we go to for information? We adopted an approach called self-directed green teams, which is borrowed from business practices that, that empower employees to identify problems and to work on it. Before, we were very top-down, so we'd have corporate goals, engineering would figure out what it is we need to do, and then we'd try to drive that down through the organization. Um, working with the RMI green team, one of the things that we discovered is that we really need to be working from the bottom up, from the floor up. So then it makes it easier to say, all right, this is what we're doing, we're generating all this waste, we're using all this energy, is there anything we as manufacturers could be doing better? And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. To turn off equipment that's not being used, we have a lot of equipment that I'm sure draws a lot of power because a lot of heat is being used in the processes. Um, so just turning off equipment when it's not in use. And we were talking about um, waste streams and reducing waste streams. 
In this particular case, it was chemical waste streams. We've got a project going. The guys have tried some solutions before. Didn't work quite so good. I believe we, got an, we know how to go after it this time. What it'll wind up doing is it'll save, they estimate about $90,000 a year in chemicals. Um, but just as important, it also means that I don't have operators tied up going up filling up machines with oil that we're going to send out for waste disposal. Now they're going to be able to actually make more parts or better quality products or do problem solving or work on other environmental issues. We're stewards of what we've been given in the world. Uh, nature, our communities, um, and uh, to be stewards of that, you're thinking generationally. You know, you're thinking, what am I leaving to my son? Well, it mattered that our approach was different because we got results. We got meaningful results. And, and not only that, there were some unattended outcomes that came out of this. You know, we took a group of experts. We had technical experts. We, we, got, we went in and we worked with people in training to, to improve training for their employees. And what happened was what we have created within, with the leadership of the organizations, a culture that says energy conservation is important. And culture is everything in an organization. You know, all the leadership books will tell you, you know, what good leaders do is they create a culture in which people want to apply themselves to achieve great results. And I, and I know that that's exactly what happened. And it happened because we had expert people, consultants, working with these companies. And we had, quite frankly, we had some really great leaders at these companies and the workers at these companies who are engaged in this project. GM and Len for being a part of this team. So with that lead in. My you know. dad taught me, you know, the importance of the environment and how we are part of the environment. We're not separate from the environment. These companies get it. They get being green. They get sustainability. They see it as an integral part to their future growth.